Pablo Ladies Hoare, the ring announcer tonight. Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Board Promotions is proud to present six rounds of boxing in the Bantamweight division. Your three judges scoring this bout in ringside. Sus tres jueces, Carla Caiz, Rudy Barragan, and Jerry Cantu. And when the bell rings, your third man inside the ring, el tercero en la superficie, Jack Reese. Introducing to you first the fighter standing in the blue corner, wearing red and white. His official weight, 118 pounds. Presentando ustedes en la esquina Tecate Azul, vistiendo pantaloncillo rojo con blanco, con un peso de 118 libras. In his professional campaign, he stands with a record of 15 victories against 11 losses, one draw, and nine of those wins coming by the fast way of knockout. Presenta un record de 15 victorias, 11 derrotas, un empate, y nueve de esas victorias por la vía del knockout. De la Ciudad de México. Mexico from Mexico City, Isao Carranza. And his opponent across the ring is standing in the red corner, wearing black trunks with white and red in his corner, Robert Garcia. He officially weighs in at 118 pounds. Y su rival en la esquina Tecate Roja, vistiendo pantaloncillo negro con blanco y rojo, con un peso idéntico de 118 libras. He stands with a record of 13 victories against one low defeat and six of those victories coming by the fast way of knockout. Presenta un record casi perfecto de 13 victorias, una derrota y seis de esas victorias por la vía del knockout de San Antonio, Texas. Joshua Franco. Y con las indicaciones finales, here is with the final instructions, Jack Reeves. Long night on. Let's look at the tail of the tape for Joshua Franco and Isao Carranza, Doug. Well, obviously Franco is the younger man, but Carranza has three inches in height, and their reach is equal. We are underway. Joshua Franco with the red tape around his wrist against Isao Carranza. Franco fighting out of Robert Garcia Boxing Academy in Riverside. But San Antonio is where he calls home. Robert has been his professional trainer. His dad, Jesse Rodriguez, also in the corner. Franco 13-1, a fighter that was signed and not much was made about him at that time. But a few years ago, on the Canelo Smith undercard in Cowboy Stadium, had a great knockout of his opponent, opened up a lot of eyes, and in the 118-pound division, Doug, you can move quickly if yes. you got the skills. Yes, you can. And from 115 pounds, which is a weight I still think that Franco can make, at 118 pounds, that's a that's very fertile ground right now in the boxing world. Um, there's more of a spotlight on those uh, sub-featherweight divisions than there were in previous years, thanks to the success of the Superfly series. Um, and uh, coming up, as a matter of fact, uh, the World Boxing Super Series is um, going to highlight the Bantamweight division and do a tournament there with world-class fighters. And you have more notable elite pound-for-pound -pound rated fighters that are sort of international stars like uh, Naoa Inoue, the monster out oh, of Japan. Oh, my goodness. Uh, making noise at 115 and, and now 118 pounds. So hardcore fight fans uh, are paying attention to these uh, lighter weight class fighters, whether it's taking place in North America or uh, in, in Asia or in the UK. This will schedule for six rounds. Our opener tonight, the Belasco Theater in downtown Los Angeles on Duran Sports on Twitter. Dougie, D-O-U-G-I-E. Fisher, if you want to tweet him. But don't tweet him questions for the mailbag. It's for day. Carranza switching southpaw right now with the silver gloves. He'll do that. Yeah, but this 118, he says, is where he feels natural. There's no problem making it. But Franco spins him around. Carranza trained by his father. 
You see the left of the body and earlier in this round, you saw the left uppercut and the left hook. Franco, that's a natural punch for him. He delivers the, his, his left with a lot of leverage. Uh, and I think something he's got to figure out is, is how long does he languish on the inside? Because he's very comfortable on the inside, but you can also take shots to your ear and high on your head that can affect your, your, your equilibrium. And Franco can also do well from the outside with his straight right and, and with a nice snappy jab. He doesn't always do that, though. Good shot for Franco. Yeah, he times. Good right hand. Yeah, he Snapping back the head of Carranza. He times his right hand very well, but you always notice there's more leverage from the left side. That's the, that's the punch that he hurts his opponents with. Solid round for Joshua Franco. Chance to have him make him do his fight. Get in there. That's his father. Carranza working the corner. Y saludos a todos los que están mirando en Colombia. Paolo Vega, a great follow for boxing. Desde Barranquilla, saludos. And right now you're watching Joshua Franco in the South Carranza. Franco, nicknamed the Professor. Lands a good right. Right now he's schooling Isao Carranza. Franco looking sharp early. So something you, you look for when a fighter's coming back from his first loss, especially a loss by stoppage. You want to see if psychologically if, if he has that, that self-belief and that confidence. And you saw the, the left to the to the sternum. That's a shot that he likes. When he's in when he's in those trenches right now. He likes to load up with that left. Of course, that could leave him open uh, for a right cross. Good over and right by Franco. Mentioned he's trained by Robert Garcia. Franco's favorite fighter growing up, Fernando Vargas and Feroz. Good right hand over the hand, followed by a body shot from Franco. More boxing from Franco tonight. I like that jab to the body, and El Feroz would have liked that jab to the body. El Feroz had a very good left oh. uppercut, now that I think about it. But uh, studying young Fernando Vargas, like right when he won the title, I'm not saying after the, the Oscar De La Hoya fight, and by that point, uh, you know, after Felix Trinidad and after uh, Oscar De La Hoya, Fernando Vargas' name was huge, and he oh, was yeah. so into his fan base, and he wanted to appease, the, appease them so much, he be, just became more of a ring warrior than the, the technician that he was coming out of uh, the 1996 Olympics. You're right. He became that just yeah, but put he, on a show. Huh? But prior to that, if you go and you watch his, uh, he, he, he boxed a clinic against Ike Corte. Yeah, he did. A very good fighter from, from Ghana. You know, kind of a borderline Hall of Famer, as a matter of fact, just as Fernando Vargas is. But he boxed a very disciplined fight. And he could do that. He could box discipline but still have that intensity. And that was Vargas at his best. And I tell you what. Those old tapes of Vargas is, is something I hope young Joshua Franco is studying. Good second round between Franco and Misao Carranza. Also getting the job done. Jenna getting her nails done and watching on ringtv.com. That's what you do. That's, Going that's, to the prom tomorrow at West Torrance. <laughs> that's getting your nails done in style. That's dedication because, you know, when you think prom, you think Bethel and Duck. Yeah, nice, nice left-right, left combination from Franco. Very comfortable on the inside. Um, and he does well, and I think he'll do well against Carranza staying on the inside and, 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 and muscling the older fighter. But I do worry about him staying in the pocket too long when the level of competition um, steps up. And he's in there with guys who are stronger than he is. Like his last fight. True. Yeah, and Fernandez was stronger than him. Yeah, 
Jab followed by a right behind the ear from Franco and a beautiful picture perfect left to the midsection. Very accurate with that left. You see him turn that uh, left uh, into an uppercut. And there's the, the, the left right left combination. Carranza took it. Third round of action scheduled for six. Joshua Franco, the professor. Six KOs on his ledger. Coming off his only defeat. Hey, the professor is showing an educated left. Yep. He does a lot with that left. Nice jab, jabs to the, the, the body, jabs to the head. He kind of uh, camouflages that left. Sometimes you think maybe yeah. he's going for a hook, but it's a, it's a left uppercut. Sometimes you think it's a left uppercut to the head, but it, it's to your liver, and sometimes it's, it's, it's a hook to the head. As the nickname Professor came because the first day he walked into the RGBA, he walked in with a sweater <laughs> and, and glasses. glasses. Oh, yeah. And, of course, in a boxing gym, they're not going to make fun of you at all, are they? <laughs> they said, this kid doesn't look like a boxer. He looks like a professor. And the name is stuck, and he's running with it to his credit. Well, there are some great fighters that had that nickname. Azuma Nelson, speaking of um, standouts from Ghana like Ike Corte, Azuma oh, yeah. Nelson, arguably the greatest fighter from Africa of all time. And he was the professor because he would take his opponents to school. But he was also a warrior. And I think uh, young Franco has that, that, fight, that kind of fighting spirit. That fighting spirit of what Franco has. So does Isao Carranza, who's actually a black belt in karate. Kato Jim is the, the gym that he and his father have down in Mexico City. That's why his father had the, the Asian letter. It looked like yeah. it was Japanese. It is. So yeah, on, on his, on his uh, jacket. They it's have his jacket. Japanese roots. Isao okay. Carranza's grandfather, or grandmother, I'm sorry. Mother, Japanese. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I was wondering. I don't, I don't see it so much with uh, Isao, but I, I see it with the dad. Yeah, I can see that heritage. So the dad, half Japanese, Isao a quarter. Well, I imagine the martial arts helps with his conditioning. Yeah. He still competes in kickboxing down in Mexico. They're like, well, what are you doing boxing? And he said again, because they pay really good in the United States. Sure. And right now, Joshua Franco is making him pay. Well, he's making, on the ropes. He's making Carranza earn that paycheck. Yep. Because this has been a punishing round for Carranza. East Africa checking in. Eddie in Tanzania. Hey, Tanzania. My goodness, come what? strong. Hey, we, we are international. Paolo Vega from Colombia yeah. is also checking in. Watching us on the Facebook. Also, Luis Jr., the pride of Laverne University. That's a producer over at Lakers TV. He's watching us, Doug, on a Friday on the 91. <laughs> Sitting on the 91. <laughs> Glad we could entertain you in traffic. Good one between Joshua Franco and Isao Carranza winding down in the third. The Belasco Theater in downtown Los Angeles. We're going to wait toward Javier Molina and Jesse Roman. This has been a very good round for Franco. Fourth run of action coming your way. Jim Boone checking in at KO Tickets. Now, this isn't a plug for KO Tickets. does a great <laughs> job getting you whatever ticket you need. He's hooked me up in the past for concerts. That's how good KO Tickets wow. is. Great broadcast, guys. Love the Vargas and Corte reference. One of the first fights I saw at Mandalay. That was a hell of an atmosphere. 
as I just replied to Jim. Oh, yeah, you did? Yeah, I think the last major fight card that my wife attended. <laughs> but your wife has a PhD. She yeah. doesn't need to be going to this. <laughs> but she was, a, she was a Quarte fan, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. How can you not be, though? I Quarte would always do Yes. Us. Yeah, no, listen, he, he challenged himself. He was, he was not looking for the easy road. Uppercut from Franco. Now think about this gym that Franco trained at. Fernando Vargas had the influence from Big G, which is Robert's father. So you have some of that in there. They're in Riverside. He trains with his friend Hector Tanahata, who came with him from Texas. Jonathan Navarro prospect. But then it's also the gym of Abner Mares. Mikey Garcia. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Guys that are think of the experience those guys bring. Those are the, those are two three division world title holders. Maidana used to be in there. You know, it, it's so as you said, you have nothing but experience around you, and you have the example, especially when Mikey shows up with his fancy cars, yeah. or Andrew shows up with his belt and other cars. Sure. As Franco is dropping That's some bombs motivation. right now. Yeah, and these are these are uh, pinpoint, very accurate punches, particularly the uppercuts. And he's hurting Carranza. He hurt Carranza in round three, and he's hurting him here yep. in round four. And that, that right hand that was high on the head, just above the ear, that has affected the, the equilibrium of Carranza. He's in a world of hurt right now. Yeah, he is. He's trying to move away, but he's yeah. still on the road. Showing some veteran savvy here. This is what Carranza does. He makes you earn everything. Frankel's looking good. Carranza trying to circle away, but the legs aren't 100% under him. I think Franco should um, focus some attention to the body. Left hook lands flush. Yeah, and that, and that hurt Carranza. It's hurting him physically. It's, it's causing Carranza pain. He's not scrambling him enough uh, to the head to where he's taking away the legs, but I think if he um, would focus a little bit to the body right now, he could take those legs away. Take some of the stamina away from Isao got that veteran's experience and as we noted earlier he's used to being in with bigger stronger mm -hmm. guys than Franco so he's gonna hang tough but you punish the guy to the body enough you, you, you take away that physical resistance and I would say Franco head hunting a little bit too much and I, and, I, and I thought that that was a problem early on with his last fight against Lucas Fernandez is after dropping him in the first round he was really looking to to land uh, to that sweet spot that, that, he, that he thought that he would find. Alex Martinez, Inland Empire Boxing tweets, don't forget Jose Ramirez now trains to RGBA. True, but I was mentioning. Oh, right, that's a that's a recent development, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, but I was mentioning the guys that have a lot of money, like Mikey and Adam. <laughs> <laughs> no, no yeah. knock on Jose. Yeah, it's coming for Jose. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's in his future, I think. There's the, the right cross landing, followed by the hook, followed by a left to the body. You see Franco defending well on the inside, and then he gets off with the left-right-left combination. He seems to be getting off with impunity here. The right to the ear, right to the eye. Gets his shoulder in there, shoulder and elbow to, to maneuver mm -hmm. Isago into to his right. Laugh if he wants to continue. Took a lot of shots in there, and I can't let him take like that again. Here's Jackery's telling him. Yeah, this is good officiating from uh, our California officials. You want to continue? Yes. I, I, I thought that really the last two rounds, last six minutes, Carranza's taken a lot of punishment, and I'm glad they're taking the precautions to make sure he's okay. And, to, and in California, they stop the time. Yeah. When the doctor steps into the ring to take a look at you, that one minute break, it's, it stops. So he's, Carranza's actually getting some extra time to recover here. You could ask him, is that fair to Franco? But the bottom line is the, the safety of the fighters and that's what the, the California Commission is looking out for. Joshua Franco looking strong. In his first fight back after losing for the first time in his career. A fight that was stopped while he was on his feet in Puerto Rico. Sal Carranza. The veteran with a record of 15 and 11, a lot of heart for him. And I keep telling you that Carranza says, I love the money, here's good. But this is how different Carranza is. He actually has a degree in robotic engineering. Oh my God. That he's never used. 
He said, I told my family I'll get the degree, like, but I want to compete in combat sports as long as I can. It's like, I could be an engineer the rest of my life. Good grief. God, God, God bless Mexican fighters. <laughs> I'm going to go get my college degree, <laughs> and then I'm going to be a journeyman fighter in the United States for as long as I can. <laughs> And I'm a black belt in karate. Yeah, and I'm a black belt in karate. That's just that's just for a hobby. That's just for fun. Yeah, and, and running I, a dojo. Yeah, I, I, and, and doing kickboxing here and there. You know, literally, I run a dojo and I compete in amateur kickboxing. You want a 24/7? Go follow this guy. Around. Yeah, it takes a very special breed. It, it, listen, it takes a very special breed to be a prize fighter a of, special, of any kind. No, but to be a journeyman, though, seriously, that's. That's a very special human character right there, to be willing to go. You know you're going to lose, and you're supposed to lose. It takes a special breed to yeah. take engineering classes. Well, that's true, too. Yeah, that's robotics. Math, that's, not, that's not your average cat. Like, yeah, robotic engineering. That's well, the true. professor is the one right now <laughs> with classes in session. Good body shot from Joshua Franco. He's got the black gloves. As Carranza's well, it's, it's over. The corner for Carranza has stopped it. And Carranza's your like, corner what? has stopped it. Oh, man, Dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's dad, Dad's being a real dad. dad. Dad's being a good dad. And he had been telling him after the second round, you need to lock in and focus. Yeah. Gato saying no, that's enough. And he's, you know, and, and this is the mentality of a journeyman too. It's like, I, I've lost my last fa five. I know I'm supposed to lose. I'm taking a beating. Don't stop it. I don't want to get this L, or if, if I know I'm going to get the L, I still want the dignity to take this guy six rounds. So it went five. Almost, yeah. Almost. And it, you know what? He, he was he was given up. Oh, I, I, I spot your son. <laughs> I just spot Mateo there. <laughs> the intern right, right behind uh, Papa Carranza. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's doing his. He's doing. Yeah. He's he's working. He's got to collect gloves tonight from the uh, opponents. He, he ain't hanging out with Steve Kim. Uh, oh, I just see Steve Kim. As a matter of fact. Yeah. yeah. My kid better there not be around. Steve yeah, Kim. I know exactly. He's gonna come back catering. <laughs> But you know what? I like this performance from Franco. Yes. It let us know that there was no residue from, you know, psychological residue from his first loss. Um, it lets the matchmakers at Golden Boy know that they can put him right back on the same track he was. There are still questions I have of Franco. Mm -hmm. Those questions are not going to be answered uh, until I see him uh, fight a scheduled 10 round bout. As we see highlights, boom, right hand landed from Franco. And this is the stoppage. Oh, like, okay, so there was a, a, a right uppercut yeah. that uh, caused Carranza to stumble, and I'm sure at that point his father was looking very closely with the white towel in his hand, He's starting to climb up those steps, saying, son, don't eat another shot like that. And there's the commission jumping right on. And there's right the commission, on. so maybe the father yeah, in California, indicated to the, the commission, right? commission, right. Well, and also in, in California, unlike other commissions, the physician, the ringside physician, has the authority to stop a fight really? if a referee doesn't stop the fight. So the physician it can jump in. Could there. have been the ringside doctor, but I'm thinking it was the, a corner stoppage. Mr. Flores will let us know, I think. You see my kid walking out with the gloves. So what they do with the opponent gloves is they keep them, put them in a bag, and if they're softly used, they'll use them again for Oh. Uh, you, it'll be usually like a first round, the first fight of the night. I didn't know. I thought they collected them to inspect them well, to make sure well, everything the, the is, is kosher do. there. So yeah, they collect okay. to inspect, but the see, like Franco has custom gloves yeah. that are made for him. So the opponents, what they'll do, from what I was told, is they'll inspect them, of course, to make right. everything's fine. And then if they're softly used, they can use them again okay. for, say, a fight like next week where right. uh, if the opponent who comes in doesn't have them, yeah. then they'll, like, okay, use it. But most of the time... Actually, slightly used gloves are better. They feel what, better. They that, fit better. You can make a, a tighter fist. But if, if, if a glove gets worn too much, yes. that padding gets crunched down and they become really hard. Because, as we know, gloves get expensive after they a while, especially when you're elite boxing glove. Not, they don't get used that often from what I was told, but most of the time they'll get them and they'll donate them to Southern California gyms. Oh, that's great. So I learned something today. Yeah. You learn something every day. Or you can just go to your local Target and get some gloves. What's the name of our, uh, our Pablo announcer? Pablo Flores. Pablo Fl I like him. From Tijuana. He's good. Is he really? Yeah. He's from TJ. He's from okay. TJ, drives up. He does a lot of the... Uh, He's like our journeyman. 
Yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe he rode up with Victor Ruiz, who yeah. we're going to see in the next bout. He knows every single person in Tijuana. I actually did a, an MMA bout down there, and he does the MMA fights down okay. there. He does the pro wrestling announcing, that, like the Lucha Libre. Yeah. He does that. He That's is probably just, fun. He is involved in everything, and every single time I see him, the facial hair is different. Sometimes he's clean shaven. <laughs> sometimes he's got the Pancho Villa mustache. Tonight, what's he got? Oh, yeah. Just a, just a I like the beard. Strong 5 o'clock shadow beard. All yeah, right. the beard works. He's very patient, too. Just stands there. <laughs> okay, he's getting ready to go. Because he knows we're talking about him. Yes. His ears are, 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 are burning. Damas y caballos, en el tiempo oficial de 1 minuto 36 segundos en el quinto asalto. We have the official time of 1 minute 36 seconds in round number 5. Declaring your winner by the way of KO Victory. Su ganado por la vía del knockout. Joshua Franco. And congratulations to Joshua Franco. He is now 14 and 1. Good. Victory after losing for the first time a few months ago in Puerto Rico. Looked good. I think one of the things that you also want to see is how a fighter reacts. Yes. In the first time in the ring, getting hit. Now, Carranza didn't have power. True. But he was still hitting him at that time. Yeah. Um, the confidence was there. The conditioning was there. The technique.